Hi, it's Teresa, and I'm here to talk to you today about setting the facts straight about feminism. And let me guess, you're here to teach them the ways of the Holy Bible! Because believe it or not, some people don't really know what feminism is. They think it's this blatant use of womanly power to annoy people. And we should just totally listen and believe because of the Holy Bible, for fuck's sakes. I've done this shit a thousand times. I'm not going to even bother to put too much effort into this video. And it's honestly so, so much more than that. And I'm here to tell you a few facts and my standpoint of where I am with feminism. We already know your standpoint with feminism. You're basically just another brainwashed idiot that just says, you know, listen to believe, listen to believe, you know, feminism is just for equality. <laughs> Let's begin. What the fuck was the point of that? No, seriously, what the fuck was the point? So, I'm wearing pink, which you know my glasses are pink. There's pink on my earrings. My pants are pink. Because I'm a girl, right? Or it could be that you just have a fascination with the color pink. An unhealthy fascination of the color pink. So I have to wear pink. I have to join the pink train because that's where all the women are. Choo-choo. You need to see a doctor immediately, seriously. What the fuck is wrong with you? Here come the women. No, 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 no. It's not like that at all. Pink can be worn by guys too. What well, no else shit, Sherlock? Men can wear pink! So? But as the world becomes super sexist, they think that pink is solely for women. Where the fuck do you get this idea? Oh wait, I'm dealing with a feminist! Feminists will say anything these days! If guys wear it, they aren't manly men. Or maybe some men just don't look that great in pink. Seriously. Do you really think that men, all men, should just wear pink all of a sudden because, you know, PATRIARCHY! They're girls. What's so bad about being a girl? Women get compared to men all the time. Seriously, grow a backbone. But still, people's perceptions are thrown off by color. If someone wears a wrong color, it's perceived in a negative light. Colors have different effects for a reason. Within our instincts, we use colors to act differently. That's why when we see a stop sign, it is usually colored red. Because within our senses, it means danger, while yellow can tell us to be cautious. This is a proven fact. This is why pink is usually for girls, because within our senses, it means femininity. And again, this is a proven fact. It doesn't mean that men can't wear pink in the same way that women can't wear blue which is really dumb because everyone should be able to wear whatever color they want regardless if it's pink blue all the colors of the rainbow it, it shouldn't matter and you you also see newborn babies having signs like the girls have pink and the boys have blue and that's really dumb how is it really dumb if it's part of our human nature it shouldn't i think that it should just be neutral but because at such a young age those two categories are split apart and it's kind of like the defining point. It's like blue is a boy color, pink is a girl color, and you can't unsee that. Because it's part of our human nature, you imbecile! So, you know, you grow up with this. You grow up with perceiving that certain colors must be for certain genders, which is not true at all. HOLY FUCK IS THIS WRONG! Believe it or not, pink actually used to be a color that guys would wear. It was a color for guys before World War I, and it was seen as this really bright, vibrant, powerful color that of course had to be for men because they were the more dominant ones. And blue was that leftover color for the girls. It was the dainty color. It was the gentle color, the softer color, which is just dumb because, you know, colors shouldn't determine who's more powerful than the other. Again, colors have different effects on people. For example, if someone is wearing red, they're more likely to go on the offensive than to be on the defensive. Women are just as powerful as men, but apparently back then, talk to the hand 1900s, they thought that pink was for guys, 
therefore they were more powerful, they were better than the women. The women were seen like less and the guys weren't. But things have developed in society where it's it's more accepting and, and you know, guys wear pink, but it's still a stigma that needs to be fixed. So our greatest issue right now is that not enough men are wearing pink? Because there are still many people that don't agree with that color as being like a gender fluid kind of thing. It can't go between one or the other. It has to stick to be a guy's color, to be a girl's color. But it's just crazy how color can divide us and that's just not okay. Because fuck human nature! Now aside from the sexist view about color, people shout, I'm a feminist! All the time. And a lot of people think that that's annoying because there are people that are very loud about their opinions and want people to understand these uh, hardships that women go through. It is annoying! People like yourself complain about minor things! And you complain about color it makes you more of like an unlikable bastard! But they don't want to hear it and they think, it's just another loud feminist, you know, they just need to chill out. Well, let me tell you one thing. It's really hard for a feminist to chill out because they notice how women are being degraded in society and being discriminated. And they feel like they really need to be a voice when other people aren't speaking out about it. For minor things, like trying to ban the word bossy! because it is a very real thing that people don't completely notice because they always just do their own thing going through life like it doesn't even matter when really it does. Holy shit, woman. It's like you're part of the fucking Matrix. But instead of taking the red pill, you're taking the purple pill. And what that is is that you're gone batshit insane. So it's important to be loud. Loud and proud, I say. They want a change to be implemented. And if they're not loud and they don't try to convince and influence a person that the way that certain things are isn't wrong, then no change will be made. So it's actually really good to have a loud voice and to put yourself out there and tell the world that a change needs to be made and women need to be seen as equals too. Yeah, just look at the end results. You're doing such a fan-fucking-tastic job! So now let me give you a rundown of a few facts that I have that um, just tell you a little bit about feminism. Look at the screenshot I just took. She's trying to do her, <laughs> her impersonation of Rocky Balboa. Uh, yeah, against the law. Also, I suggest that you start playing the drinking game that I invented. So, let's play the drinking game. You guys know what to do. In itself. One, feminism is defined as the belief in social, political, and economic equality of the sexes. All I have to say is fuck your fucking dictionary. Oh, and this is the part where you guys start taking a drink. Two, the goal of feminism is to challenge the systemic inequalities women face on a daily basis. Things like pink being a feminine color. Oh, the humanity. So different from race, the battle of the sexes seems to persist and men still have many benefits that women are left without. And like I said before, there have been obvious improvements over the years and things have become a lot better, but there still needs to be a lot of work done to fully make it equal so that women also have a positive stigma like men do. Yeah, because men can never have any disadvantages at all. I mean, just look at all these examples right here. Three. Feminism works towards equality and not female superiority. This is the part where you if take you another sip, just boys. talking about stuff and- So, this is super important because a lot of people think that being a feminist is degrading towards men. It's putting men down, but that's not true at all. Ignore the man behind the curtain, please! The reason why we're so loud is because people don't notice the differences that men and women face and sometimes it can seem like it degrades a man because we're so loud, because we're telling society to notice this, the way that women are treated and not the way that men are. It's not that we're forgetting about the men, but it's just showing the major contrast that men and women have and what should be done to make it equal for them. I'm not playing. I'm not yo, playing. Yo, what are you doing? Oh, chill, 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 chill. Yo, yo, we're filming, we're, fr we're filming. Look, we're, are you all right? We're filming a social experiment, look. Thank you guys for that. 
Look, we're filming. We're filming. Thank you guys for filming. Don't do that. Listen. Don't do that. Listen. Come here. Come here. Don't touch the woman. Don't touch the woman. Cheating on me again? You texting that girl again, huh? I wasn't cheating at you. I saw that picture too. I wasn't cheating at you. I wasn't cheating on you. Serious? Are you serious right now? Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? Jeez, you women have it so hard. It's a real thing in society because a lot of people just go what's played by the book. You know, they don't really realize what is being done to discriminate women from certain things what they're being left without. And we're so used to listening to and believing what the media says. Oh, for fuck's sakes, no one's this stupid. And that makes us unable to develop individualized opinions. We're kind of brainwashed by the media to believe certain things, to believe that women should shave their legs to be sexy or should shave their armpits to be sexy. And I'm just using those as an example, but it just goes to show that, you know, we're without our own opinions because as women, we believe that through society, if what the media tells us what we should do, we just follow, you know, what these celebrities do, what everyone does, and we're no longer our own person. So you believe that marketing towards a certain group of people in order for them to look great is somehow meaning that you're being controlled by the media. All you need now is a tinfoil hat. Also guys, this is where you take another sip of your drink. And you know, this is also strange for a feminist to be claiming that people are being brainwashed, yet you repeat the exact same thing as every feminist. It's almost as if you're a part of a hive mind. We have to fit in with the world, you know, we can't, we can't do certain things because we feel like we're restricted and we feel like we have to upkeep ourselves to a certain level that men don't have to. Oh yeah, there's not like fucking ads telling men to shave their body parts as well. Let that sink in for a moment. You can kind of see that in beauty commercials. They say you should wear a certain kind of makeup to look pretty because if you don't wear it, you know, you're not as pretty. I mean, they don't say that, but I feel like it's implied and implemented within it. It's kind of part of the branding process. How dare these people market towards you in order to encourage you to look pretty? Patriarchy! And a lot of commercials just focus on the money that they make from it. They don't really realize what it might be doing to affect society and a person's feelings. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is what I like to call the purple pill overdose. Four, feminists respect individual informed choices and believe there shouldn't be a double standard in judging a person. Anita Sarkeesian would like to say hi to you. Everyone has the right to sexual autonomy and the ability to make decisions about when, how, and with whom to conduct their sexual life. You're a hoe, or you're a whore. Or just negative connotations made up by society to degrade a woman and her sexual life. Do you have any idea on how easy it is for a woman to get laid compared to that of a man? You don't see a guy being called that. I mean, there are new words, I guess, that have been made to degrade a guy, but it's not to the same extent, nowhere near the same extent as a woman. Oh, the horror of words! It shouldn't be anyone's business but theirs, and you shouldn't judge them for the way that they choose to live their life. You know, worry about yourself. It's not worth it to just degrade someone with a, a negative connotation like that. It's just dumb and immature. Feminists are able to see through these negative connotations brought upon women and realize that it's extremely degrading. And as before, I said, and again I say, a change needs to be made. Oh, you poor little special snowflake! Go on Tumblr and write how offended you are! Seriously, grow some balls! And there are different kinds of feminism. I'll put that on number five. There are things such as girly feminism, third wave feminism, and pro-sex feminism, and there are multiple others, but those are just a few of the most popular kinds of feminism. Well, unless you're a choice feminist or a freedom feminist, you're going to say the exact same thing just from every other feminist. Seriously, all it can be summed up is PATRIARCHY! And girly feminism is basically referring to mostly younger women who embrace feminist politics, 
Um, at the same time as traditionally feminine pursuits, and that can include cooking, fashion, and crafting. Third wave feminists have broadened their goals and focused on ideas like abolishing gender roles. This picture pretty much just sums up what third wave feminism is. And stereotyping among men and women. And pro-sex feminism centers on the idea that sexual freedom is an essential component of women's freedom. So. You know, that's just a few of the different kinds of feminism. All of these groups aim to deal with the kinds of discrimination faced by women and sometimes men. You heard that, ladies? Sometimes feminism focuses on men. And by that, they mean, like, men can't express their feelings! So all in all, I really don't see why anyone wouldn't want to be a feminist. Because, I mean, some people just think they can go by with life without having a feminist standpoint, but I feel like everyone needs their own feminist standpoint. Why? So that way we can be a part of your fucking hive mind? No thanks! And seriously! You do not need to be a feminist in order to be for equality! Because women deserve to have this kind of equality, you know, I'm glad that we've been working our way up to it, but it's just, still there's so much of a difference, there's so much of a contrast. It's just never enough for you. You're a pig. You just can't get enough. I feel like we shouldn't stop fighting for that kind of equality. And some people just don't think it's a big deal because they're so used to living their life with nothing really happening to them. Oh jeez, I wonder why. Maybe because there's nothing wrong with what we have now. But it could be affecting other people a lot more greatly um, that don't have certain opportunities. But all in all, it's just... As a woman, myself, you know, I just feel like it's really important to find that equality. And I really appreciate feminism and people that are feminists and he for she and just the want to have that equality and to have so many people supporting that is wonderful. And I really hope that everyone can get to that point. And if you really want an analogy, think of it like this. This is kind of stupid, but I'm gonna just say it. So, let's say you have the chance to get a really delicious cookie. There's a, a wonderful cookie. It's amazing. It's delicious. Everyone wants it. And all the men get it. And the women get the okay cookie. They get the cookie that's, you know, a little burned, but it's, it's a cookie nonetheless. But we want that really good cookie because, you know, we deserve it. You keep making the funniest faces. <laughs> But seriously, how do we know that these women didn't just slack off and, you know, basically just demanding that we want that special cookie that all those men are getting? Look how hard I'm working! Like, if you actually think that you actually work harder than your male counterparts. We've been waiting for it for so long and we get this burnt one. Regardless if we have a cookie, regardless if we have a life that we can live, we want equal cookies. We want to live where there is equality and where men and women, as two different genders, can just live in harmony. Uh, uh, join the hive mind! Join the hive mind! Don't you wish it could be that easy? It's not. But that's just my standpoint on feminism and how I believe it affects society and how people think about it. Thanks for listening to my rant, so I hope you liked this video. I don't. I don't like your video at all. I think you're a moron. And you need help. <laughs> Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and leave a comment down below telling me what you want to hear about next. Um, or if you want to talk to me and provide me with any information. Just talk to me. I want to hear- I want to hear your thoughts. Well, here's an entire video debunking what you just said! I know you're not gonna respond!